What's cracking, guys? Omar Esau here, back with another video. Silence. It's kind of beautiful, isn't it? Well, we slayed one giant, and now it's time to slay another on this channel. I want to talk about how the concept of perfect is overrated, how perfect really doesn't exist. And if you want to get started on your journey, if you're waiting for a certain set of variables to come together for an auspicious beginning where you have the signs from the gods above to indicate you should be doing what you want to do, it's not going to happen. And what I mean is for the vast majority of us, unless we're in a training camp, unless we're a professional athlete, let's say we're in Russia where you're in a training camp where they feed you, they clothe you, uh, they give you sleeping quarters, you have to focus on nothing else other than lifting, you can control all your variables outside of lifting then yeah, the perfect environment does exist and you can factor that in. But for the vast majority of individuals, we deal with imperfection or suboptimal situations every single time we enter the gym, every single week, every single goal that we have, and that's okay. We want to talk about the concept, kind of like in video games, of min-maxing. And here's what I mean. I'm going to give you a few specific examples of the mindset that I have or I try and instill of resilience or robustness or as Nassim uh, Talib would talk about, anti-fragile. So in the face of adversity, choosing to overcome it, even though your starting point or wherever you choose to start might not be great. Let me give you a few examples. So, number one, I weighed in today, 11th week of trimming down. And people know it's on Instagram, we have the photos. People are getting excited. I think I'm almost close to getting my first offer. Someone soliciting me for a flex show. I haven't had it yet. I'm not Matt Ogus, but one can dream. I need that side income. So it's almost happening. But I'm now, I weighed 181.8, so that's 16 pounds down in 11 weeks. I'm definitely getting leaner. And I stuck through it, I'm following my word, I'm doing exactly what I need to do. And I knew this was gonna happen. I had a big, and I still have this big goal I hope to announce for you guys. I think it'll be very exciting when it comes to content and a journey of building something, owning a certain facility, let's say, and that's a lot of stress. And from talking to people like uh, Alan Thrall, from talking to Jeremy Hamilton when he opened up his facility, and a lot of other people, it's such a high concentration of stress that really you can't plan for other things. Oh, you want to peak for powerlifting meat? Forget it, man, you're done. Oh, you want to try and get really lean? Well, that extra stress always on your mind. You might become too food focused. You're making it unnecessarily hard on yourself to achieve specific goals. So I was waiting for that, but you know what? You can't wait forever. And that's why I think some people are attracted to some of the things that David Goggins says, where the best time to start essentially is now with the concept. So I was waiting, waiting, waiting. I was in this lean mass phase. I was getting stronger. I was hitting PRs. I didn't want to lean down, but I got tired of waiting for this perfect opportunity to happen. I'm like, I'm gonna start right fucking now. So I started leaning down. Was it the time I wanted to lean down? No, but you know what? I have a lot of different goals, and because I'm a multifaceted individual, I'm not just a strength athlete, I don't wanna just, let's say, compete in bodybuilding, this and that, I have a lot of different goals. I wanna look good, I wanna perform well. Time to get lean. So I started it out, it's been great so far, 16 pounds down, I'm loving it. It wasn't the time I wanted to start, but you deal with the variables that you have. As my favorite military general of all time, Hannibal Barca said, well, it's apocryphal, but I do believe, uh, judging by his actions, that it very well could have been something he said, that we'll either find a way or we'll make one. So that's one example. Let me give you another minor example, okay? I'm deadlifting today, and normally what would happen in a fat loss phase, I had a minor inconvenience once again with my left knee, lateral meniscus, no big deal, but it means things like squat, uh, squats, gotta dial it back a little bit. Okay, certain movements I gotta be wary of. Okay, we can work around that. I did deadlifts and now as I'm getting heavier on the deadlifts, four plates, 425, 435, I'm feeling it as I'm applying pressure, that quad extension at the initial uh, beginning, I am feeling it, it aggravates it. Okay, I could do a few things. I could use a lighter weight or I could work around and today you'll notice we have a clip of the final set I believe where it's a little bit more like a stiff leg movement and I took my time. Rather than using less weight, I found a workaround where I just changed my technique and I was able to get the same training effect. If I had one of these setbacks before and some people maybe you can relate was almost that all or nothing and say, oh well, wait a second, maybe I should eat a maintenance for a week or two or a few weeks, make sure that I'm well fed, I'm recovered before I resume. Nah man, we're achieving this goal. So 
We're leaning down, we're making, we're adapting, we're, uh, as Mike Tashir would say, when you have new information coming to you, oh, this happens, work around it. Find the variables that you can manipulate. Same idea when it comes to cutting. I think too many of us wait for that perfect time and not to get too deep, we wait for that perfect time in life. Well, when I get older, I'm gonna open this business or I'm gonna go back to school or I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna dump this shitty relationship, whatever it might be. But we just hang on and we never try and fulfill that destiny, the greatness within and inevitably, we kind of get defeated by time. As David Foster Wallace would say, one of the biggest setbacks, one of the biggest hurdles we all have to deal with is just the banal things, the day-to-day -day minor setbacks, the chronic stress rather than some acute trauma like a car accident. Um, but that is what training is, trying to develop that robustness, that anti-fragility and finding those workarounds. So I could say safely, this fat loss phase or whatever this body recomp has uh, been has been the easiest that I personally have undergone in the last six years. My strength is feeling good. The mood, most importantly, you know, when you cut for a while, I was reading, shout out to Igor, Vitruvian Physique, uh, how he's preparing for a physique show and he's getting to that point, man, where it's getting grindy and I could sympathize and empathize uh, with him. Fortunately, with all the variables I've had thrown my way, we've been able to make that guacamole, make it happen, and produce a good training effect. So really guys, that mindset or being more analytical and finding what you can manipulate is a very smart idea. I hope every single one of you to throw a little positivity your way. It's Thanksgiving today, the day that we're recording in Canada. I hope every single one of you reaches your goals and ascends higher than even you think that you can. I'm thankful for all of you. Thank you so much for watching this video. Enjoy yourself. Tell someone you care about them. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like the damn video. And I'll see all you guys, my rascals, in that next video. Peace. Severin, despite yawning a lot, I care about you. Thank you. <laughs> that felt very genuine. I felt that. Eat your vegetables, eat your vegetables, eat your fucking vegetables.